Yo, 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 what is up? Holy life. We out here, man. Yo, so today, today's video is going to be about, it's going to be kingdom business. So kingdom business, basically, whatever, if you ever wanted to make, if you ever wanted to make a clothing brand, maybe, or if you ever wanted to uh, shoot a podcast video, maybe if you wanted to make YouTube videos, If you ever wanted to make TikTok videos, if you ever wanted to, just anything for God that you had the urge to do, you know what I'm saying? That's what this video is going to be about. I really like this video. I hope y'all like this video. You know what I'm saying? Let's open up with a word of prayer, though. Father God, you, we humble ourselves and you exalt us, Lord. If we exalt ourselves, you will humble us, Lord. I pray that this video is... Um, knowledgeable Lord Father I pray you are in the midst I pray you go out and you give them revelation You give them peace You give them wisdom from everything I say Lord Everything I say you have given it to me Lord I don't speak on my own accord I don't speak on my own power I speak only what you told me And what you've put in my brain Lord And I just pray that everyone right here right now listening That they can have a sound mind And peace to Whatever storm they may be going through Lord and I just pray that your spirit is in the midst. Your presence is in the midst of this video. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So, yeah, I got some things right here to, that, I read, that I wrote down for us to talk about. So, yeah, if you ever feel like doing anything for God, do it. Just do it, bro. Because the more you... Listen, God put that urge in you to do that good work. I don't know what the verse is right now. But it says, it's him that put, that wills you to do his good pleasure. It's him that puts that urge in you. Before, when you was in the world, you didn't have no pleasure to make no things for Jesus, dude. Like I'm telling you, you didn't have no urge to do none of that. It's the Holy Spirit in you pushing to glorify the Father, to glorify Jesus. So do it. The devil's going to stop. The devil's, the devil's not going to stop. The enemy, the adversary is not going to stop. Uh, um, making you procrastinate He's not going to stop distracting you Because he doesn't want you to do that Listen Your obedience Your obedience is not only for you You feel what I'm saying Your obedience is not only for you Your yes Is not only for you So an example is Billy Graham Or any pastor really Their obedience was not only for them Their yes was not only for them oh, Thank you Holy Spirit Apostle Paul His obedience His yes it wasn't only for him. He wrote half the Bible. He could have just said, nah, uh, yeah, I just I met Jesus of Nazareth, uh, but I, I'm not really going to travel the world and get them. You know what I'm saying? Even though I feel that way, but I don't know, maybe it's, he did it anyways. That was his, that's what he wanted to do. God called him, many are called, but few are chosen. He could have ignored that. But his obedience, his yes, wrote almost half the Bible and gave us wisdom through him. You don't know what God is going to do through you. You don't know what God is going to do through you and use you. He can do more than we can ever ask or imagine. Like, when I first came to Jesus Christ, you know what I'm saying? I was just chilling in His grace. And then I just felt like, I watched TikTok videos and I seen like Christian TikTok or whatever. And then I just felt, like back there I felt like, oh, I want to make a video. So I just set the camera down, made a video. Whatever was on my heart. I started loving to do it. Boom, boom, boom. This is just that little push, that little pull, and then that little Yes. And then it goes more. You know what I'm saying? I love it. So whatever you got in your mind to do, do it. What's the worst that can happen? Nothing. Nothing really is going to happen. Listen, in Jesus' name. Next topic is no respect to persons. So treat all people the same. No matter if, you know what I'm saying, you got a high person doing this for the kingdom or this person doing this or this person. Treat all people the same. Don't, don't, don't glorify. Don't idolize nobody. Don't idolize nobody. Don't idolize the wonders and the signs that people are doing. Just take the wisdom, okay? They have wisdom. They have revelation. Oh, cool. Don't idolize them. You know what I'm saying? Don't treat them higher than this person either. No respect to a person. God doesn't do respect to a person. What, really, what that really means is like, I wouldn't, I would treat young boy the same as I treat my dog. I would treat the president the way I would treat my dog. You know what I'm saying? But obviously with a little bit more respect, I guess. But no respect to a person. You don't treat them differently just because they're, they're ranking or because what they have done, if that makes sense. Apostle Paul talked about that too a little bit. 
Treat all people the same. Be humble. I think I prayed, I said, if we exalt ourselves, we will be humbled. And if we humble ourselves, he will exalt us. If y'all want to turn with me in Matthew 23, verse 12, we can go out. Go ahead and do that. In Jesus' name. Never let that there cloud your judge, man. You ain't sell your soul, but you don't know him, so that's borderline. Check me out, though. Matthew 23, 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be, oh, my King James says, abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, bro. Whatever God gives you, don't, don't exalt yourself. You know what I'm saying? We're human. So it's easy to let the human side of us worship somebody other than God. Don't worship the creator. Don't worship the creation. Worship the creator. You know what I'm saying? Don't ever worship the creation. I'm, I'm, I'm the creation, my creator. Worship the creator. I love this verse. I don't really, I think it's Matthew something. Let me find it. But where Jesus says, let your light shine that men see your good work and they glorify your father, which is in heaven. That verse, that verse is really good. You know what I'm saying? Don't. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Isn't that good? That I could do good works. I could do these things and people will glorify my Father which is in heaven. I don't want another glory. We don't want another glory. We only glorify the Father because without him, we would be nothing. Without him saving me, I wouldn't be doing this. There's also another verse. I want to find it for y'all. You are his good worksmanship. And he will finish the good work he started in you. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his worksmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. <sighs> oh my gosh. So we are his worksmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So you got the idea, you got this and that, you should walk in that. You should walk in that. He prepared that for you beforehand. Like he knew me in my mother's womb before my mother's womb. Come on. In Jesus name. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus is Lord. Holy life. Listen. So this right now, he already knew what's going to happen. But I just had to do that. I had to buy this camera. I had to buy this. I had to buy the laptop. You got to work. That's why it says faith without works is dead. Faith without works. You have faith. Okay. Yeah. If I do this, God going to really, you know what I'm saying? Me and God, if we team up, man, we're going we gonna to take off, man. We're going to take over the world, man, for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But you're not, you're not putting no work in. This is what I like to always say. You can pray for your room to be clean, but if you never get up to... Put your laundry in the thing or, or, or fold any clothes. Your room never going to be clean. How is your room going to be clean? Faith without works is dead. Amen. Listen. This too right here is important. If whatever you're going to do, it's more towards TikTok or YouTube videos or podcast videos. Do it for that one soul to change. You got to have that mindset. Do it for that one soul. Jesus said, I will leave the 99 for that one lost sheep. And he rejoices more than that one, than the 99. Do it for that one lost sheep. Do it for that one soul. Because you might not have that much people watching you first. And then it could get discouraging. But do it for the people that are watching you. Why are the people that are not watching more important than the people that are watching you? You feel me? If you're doing a Bible study too, why are the people that is not there more important than the people that is there? You know what I'm saying? Why are the people that's not out there, that's not watching you, that's not listening, that's not there, more than people that the people are there? There's probably three people there. They're important. Important to them. You could be trusted with a little. You could be trusted with a lot. Do it for them. People, I, I was talking to my friends. I told him to do something. He was like, ah, I don't know, ah, da, da, about something. I was like, though, do it for that one. You know what I'm saying? Go hard for that one. And then you will never go wrong. You will never go wrong. 
Like right now, I think I get, I don't know, probably like, say you get just like, say you drop a video and you get like 10 people watching your YouTube video or podcast or something. That 10 people is something. That 10 people is a lot. That is good right there. And do it for those 10 people every day. And listen, I always say, if my if I have if I make a video and it helps one person, they say I needed that. Right away, that video completed its course. That video completed its purpose in life. Cause I just want to make videos to help people. One person. If it's one person, that's cool. That video is done with. That video has done its purpose. Obviously it might help more people, but you get what I'm saying. Like once it helps that one person, once when that one person said I needed it, I don't care how much it can have one view. That one view, that person said, wow, this helped me. Oh, da, 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 da. Then that video, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So do, do it for that one. You got to have that mindset. Because Jesus was intentional. He talked to the one. Yes, he talked to the multitude. But he also talked to that one. So have that mindset in Jesus' name. Next thing is never compromise. Never, never compromise. Keep first. Keep God first as you get big. You know what I'm saying? And his favor will stay on your life. Never compromise. Because look, you can start getting big. And then money can start coming in or whatever. And then you can start to compromise. I'll give you an example of compromising. Say a pastor goes to um, college to have a church. And then... He starts to he starts to do the church. You know what I'm saying? This is something I feel like they don't all start off bad. Every probably Christian um, person that's high in the in the world right now, you see they look corrupt. They do it for the money. I don't think they all started off bad. But then you know what the word says? It says the love of money, not not money itself. The love of money is the root of all evil. But the world says the money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money in the word of God. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. So they didn't, I feel like they didn't all start off bad. But towards, on they walked, they straight away, they took their eyes off Jesus. They started sinking. And they didn't want his help to get back up. They let money get that, 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 that number one spot. So don't ever compromise. What I was saying with the pastor, he got to, um, he went to college to learn the pastor, to do this, that. He went to seminary school he got a church boom nobody's coming and then he starts to compromise in the church and starts to make it worldly so more people can come starts to twist scripture so more people can come that's compromising just to be more popular don't ever compromise stay true to this word because this is the word we stand on excuse me this is the word we stand on because everything everything gonna pass away this video is gonna pass away Okay, you know what I'm saying? It's going to do its course. It's going to do it with its purpose. It's going to do what it's made to do, but it's going to pass away. Don't ever compromise. And we're human, so it's going to come, but you that's when you walk in the spirit and you say, no, flesh, I don't want to do that. I'm not compromising. I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Because we're human. So it's okay that you that little thought comes in your head or that desire or you stray away, but that's when you walk in the spirit. That's when you crucify your flesh and you say, no. I'm not going to let this take the place of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to let this take the place of what I truly started this for. You know what I'm saying? Because you could start something and then you could your intentions with it can stray away. That's why the heart is the most deceitful thing above all else who could know it. Desperately wicked. That's why you got to crucify your flesh and deny yourself. Deny yourself really. You, it, it, it's okay because it's going to happen. It's going to come. But it's, it depends on how you handle that. Is to sh- That shows what foundation you're on when it shows how you handle those situations. You know, when something happens, when something comes, and you have to make a decision to either, oh, do it for the money, do it for the people, do it for the likes, do it for the fame, or you, you stay on that narrow road and you do it for King Jesus. You do it for the one that matters. You do it for the one that took your punishment on the cross. The one that gave you that life. The one that gave you that urge. And then you're going to throw it all away for riches and fame. What shall I profit if I gain the whole world but lose my own soul? Come on. Talk to me. Now listen. I don't know if everybody's going to like this, but look. 
Not everyone's going to want to do some. You know what I'm saying? Not everyone's going to make a podcast. Not everyone's going to make YouTube. Not everyone's going to do clothing brand. Not everyone's going to do these things. And that's okay. Not everyone has to have a microphone in the church. Not everyone has to be a preacher. Not everyone has to do this. Some people, they're just supposed to sweep in the church. Listen, and if you got hurt, listen, Jesus said the be- the, high, the, the, um, the most important in the kingdom of God or something like that is a servant. A servant. Jesus was a servant. It's okay. We all have our reason to live. We all have our purpose. You're a person that's made, you're a person that's full of purpose. That's like a tongue twister, boy. You're a person full of purpose. You know what I'm saying? In Jesus' name. Listen. So he made you. Look, um, Apostle Paul, he was talking about the gifts. Now, this is for the gifts, but you can also use it with this. He said, um, if the eye says, I'm not a hand, I'm not important. Because he said the word body, you know the verse. But he said, if the eye says, my, I'm not a hand, I'm not important. Like, dude, they all has its functions. If my if my 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 ears said, "Oh, I'm not the feed, I'm not important." Dude, I still need it. So you have a purpose. Whether you could serve behind somebody or 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 just do this and that, you still have a purpose. And you're still supposed to be the light. No matter you don't have to you don't have to do a podcast video. You don't have to do a YouTube channel. You don't have to make a clothing brand. You don't have to make TikTok videos. You don't have to do these things, but you can still spread the word on, on Instagram. You could post other people that's doing it, and you can still spread the word. And also, you are sub- still supposed to be the light. Slide with me to Matthew 28, verse 16 and 20. Oh, oh, oh there he goes again. He strikes back. Check me out. Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go you, therefore, and teach all nations, back, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So yeah, that's just hard right there, boy. So we all supposed to do that, man. In Jesus' name, go teach all nations. You don't really got to... Listen. You can be the light at your job. You can be the light wherever you wherever you are in life right now. You can be the light. Like I said, that one person in your life. I'm never I could never I might never be able to reach them. They're right next to you though. You know what I'm saying? You can be the light. Jesus calls us to be the light in this dark world. So you don't have to do this and that, but you can still be the light. You're supposed to be the light. Be the light. You know what I'm saying? Jesus called us for the Great Commission to teach everyone around you. Share the gospel. You don't have to go on social media. You don't have to do this and that. Maybe that's not that's maybe that's not your cup of tea. Maybe that's not this and that. But you can still be the light. Jesus still wants you to be the light. You know what I'm saying? Like at work, maybe at church, maybe in your family, maybe in your friend group, maybe wherever you go, maybe at the store. Someone's struggling with something. Tell them about Jesus. Help them. Tell them about Jesus. Look, it's easy. Two ways. I'm going to give you two ways to evangelize right now. One, you go to somebody, say it's an old lady, and be like, hey, I like your shoes. <laughs> Thank you. That's so nice of you. Do you know? And you could just put it in Jesus. No matter however you want to go about it, you could put it in Jesus right there. Second way, you can go up to anybody and say, how you doing? I just um was asking. I was just wondering if I could pray for you. Anything to pray about? This world is crazy. That's gonna make them happy. Just pray for them. And them, they ask a question. You gotta know what you're talking about, though. You know what I'm saying? They ask a question. Ah, thank you for that prayer. What? Who are you? Uh, who's Jesus? You know what I'm saying? You gotta be able to answer those questions. You know what I'm saying? If you wanna go with me, go to, with me to Second Timothy two fifteen. Whoever is going with me with the Bible, 
If they got their Bible, you a real one. I know not everybody going to be doing it, but it's all good in Jesus' name. Check me out, though. 2 Timothy 2, chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Come on, man. Let me say it again for you. Come on, man. Holy, holy life. Second Timothy, chapter two, verse fifteen. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. <sighs> rightly dividing the word of truth. Study yourself. What that mean, brother Chris? What that mean? I don't really know what that mean. It means you got to know the word. So when things come, when people come. You're supposed to be spreading the word. Like I said, you don't have to do this. Maybe you don't want to, maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you don't have no urge to do that at all. That's okay. Not everybody's meant to do the same thing. But you are meant to spread the word of Jesus Christ. You are meant to spread the gospel. You didn't get the gospel just for your own good. You didn't get that wisdom just for your own good. You didn't go through that which you went through for your own good. You did it to help other people. And it doesn't have to be the whole multitude. It could be that one single person, man. And that's okay. Study though. Christians, we really don't know. Most of us don't are not. We're not knowledgeable in these things, bro. They can ask us a question. We go, we go, we gotta know. We gotta be able to tell them. Ask God for wisdom. James one five. Give. Ask God for wisdom. If you lack wisdom, study yourself to show yourself approved, so you don't be ashamed. They gonna come to you. They gonna tell you some things. You gonna be like, oh snap. They're going to tell you about the word. You even going to know that was, that was in there. You're going you're gonna to try to tell them something. Come on. It's all good, though. We live and you learn. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't a waste of time if you learned something. But if you didn't learn anything, it was a waste of time. You know what I'm saying? I'll say it again. It wasn't a waste of time. That situation wasn't a waste of time. That season wasn't a waste of time if you learned something from it. But if you didn't learn from nothing, if you didn't learn nothing from it, it's a waste of time. That's all I got to say in Jesus' name. You know what I'm saying? We're going to flip this page real quick. Vroom! Support. Support is something too, you know what I'm saying? Who do you have around you? Like, who? what friends you have to support you? Because support is something. You know, we need that fellowship. Jesus walked around with 12 deep. <laughs> Jesus walked around 12 deep. If you don't know what that means, he, he walked around with 12 people. You know what I'm saying? That fellowship... You know, who's around you? I'm telling you, it feels so good when you have friends that uplift you, that support you in what you do in your calling for Christ Jesus. I'm not saying support you like, oh, I see what you're doing like a YouTuber like in the world. Like, I support you. Oh, I see you doing your thing. No. Support you in your calling for Jesus. Because that's your brother and that's your sister. You know what I'm saying? They shouldn't be hating on you. They shouldn't be, you know what I'm saying, talking down on you. You know what I'm saying? If you truly love someone... You will be genuinely happy when they're celebrating, when they're doing something good for themselves, or when they're doing something good for the kingdom. You would truly be happy. Like, say, like, I got, ooh, I got a cake. Or, I, I just got a, like, a uh, promotion or something, or like a, a trophy. And I show my friends, I'm like, yo, look. And then you, and then you got some friends like, ugh. You see that. You can feel that. Hey, you can see that. You can feel that. I don't want to say energy, because that's that new age stuff. But... Just there's something, their heart. <laughs> you don't have to be around that. You don't have to be around that. It is, it's terrible when you have in, uh, a team or you have friends and you don't feel that support, you don't feel that love. Just leave. I don't know what they got going on. God knows what they got going on. Pray about it first and then you can leave. You know what I'm saying? You're going to go somewhere and you will be loved. They will have that love of Jesus Christ for you. And sometimes you won't get no support. That's okay. My support comes from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you won't get that support. That's just how it is. That's just life sometimes. But you got to keep going hard for Jesus Christ and not doing it for nobody in this world. Listen. Second, you are God-ordained. You're not ordained by men. So if you try to do something, they're going to be like, oh, you're too young. Oh, you didn't go to Bible college. Come on, bro. God calls, God qualifies the called. 
He doesn't qualify. He doesn't call the qualified people. You know what I'm saying? Two people. This person's qualified. This person's not qualified. He's gonna call the per. I'm not saying this is. This is an example though. This he's gonna call this person if they want to come. Then he will qualify them. He will give them the wisdom. He will give them the the understanding to 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 un- the understanding to handle all situations. The wisdom to handle all situations. The person that's qualified, they will be puffed up sometimes. Maybe your knowledge could puff you up. That's what the words say. He calls. He qualifies the called. He doesn't call the qualified. Like he doesn't say, okay. This guy went to Bible college. This guy did seminary school. This guy knows his Bible front to back. I think he's good to handle this word. Now, God could do whatever he want to do. But I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? If you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you got that fire burning in you. You got that urge to do something, do it. He's going to qualify you. He will give you the wisdom to handle every situation. He will give you the understanding to handle every situation. I'm going to share something I never shared before. The reason, uh, so before, if you know my, my Instagram and my TikTok, they used to be Disciple Sleepy. When I first came to Jesus, I went by I went by Sleepy for some reason. But I changed my thing to Disciple Sleepy. And then I got delivered from that. A name. You could get delivered from a name. If you had a nickname from the back, from the past, like say, 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 say Slaughter. <laughs> say Slaughter for life or like you hit up Slaughter or you hit up. You hit up, you hit up, um, just a nickname, you know what I'm saying, from your old life. You could be delivered from that. That's like a, it's like your alter ego. It's like another spirit kind of, it's like another you in a way. I got delivered from that, you know what I'm saying? So then after I got delivered from that, you know, I felt, I felt like a, something got off me for real. And when I first came to Jesus, I, I felt him say, stop going by sleepy. And I brushed it off for real. Sorry, Lord. But I brushed it off. I ignored it. You know what I'm saying? And then it came up again, and I was like, okay. I like I was talking to this deliverer um, person who who is deliverance ministry. And I was like, do you think I need to be delivered from anything? And then they said the Holy Spirit told them my name. So I'm like, okay. And I did it. I felt better. But anyways, when I did that, I had to change my handles, my social media handles. I can't keep going by that name. If I, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I was like, yo, Jesus. I need a name, you know, and I like, I like some, give me something cool or something. I like, cause you know, I like stuff that, that groove is stuff. So I was like, let me get a cool name or something. He said apostle. And at first he said apostle Chris. I'm like, bro, that is disgusting. That is so bland and so lame. And I said, and I was like, because my mom, she had said that apostle means someone who had seen Jesus before. So I was like, immediate, immediately, I was like, nah, I can't be an apostle, Chris, because I haven't seen you. So I don't think that would work. That, and it was this name. It was just lame. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't like fiery or saucy, whatever. That's what I was thinking. But yeah, so then I was like, nah. And then I searched it up and I was like, it, it said teacher or someone to do this. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, maybe I could be. Are you telling me to do that for real? So, so I changed it to Apostle Chris Seven. I don't really, you know what I'm saying? When people would say to me, oh, why you call yourself Apostle? Who makes someone an apostle? Do the, does the Bible college make you an apostle? Does your pastor make you an apostle? Or does Jesus Christ of Nazareth make you an apostle? I don't like to talk about it, though, because it's, it's nonsense. It doesn't matter. I know what Jesus told me to do. Call me. So I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? But this is the only time I'm going to talk about it, and this is the only reason I'm going to tell you. Because God ordained you. God called you. God um, told you to do this. You know what I'm saying? People are not going to understand. You don't have to explain yourself to everybody. Jesus did not go around explaining himself to everybody. Jesus did not um, clear up anything. If someone had something in his mind, if someone was going through something, they was thinking something about Jesus, a little rumor, Jesus is not going to have to clear it up. He don't have to clear it up. Continue on your mission. So that's a little some of that. I'm gonna just. That's the only time I'm going to say it, too. So yeah, and then I put seven. So it's Apostle Chris seven. Seven means complete. So that was the little juice right there. You know what I'm saying? I put on it the little juice right there. You know what I'm saying? Apostle Chris seven. So yeah, in Jesus name. But it's just a. You don't need to call me that. You can just call me Brother Chris. It don't really matter though. Praise God. Listen to this. You cannot promote the kingdom if you don't know if you don't know the King. How will you promote the kingdom of God if you don't know the King? How will you promote heaven if you don't know Jesus Christ? How will you promote the kingdom of God if you don't know the Father? 
You gotta know them. And in the word, it's yo, 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 my bad, y'all. It just cut off on me. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it, when it when it last cut off, but I'm gonna just go from um sin and distractions. When the devil can't get you to, when the adversary can't get you to sin anymore, he's gonna distract you. You are on a mission for the Most High. So stay on that mission. You know what I'm saying? Don't let those distractions get to you, man. You got something bigger to do. God got a bigger plan for you. God needs you to move so he can move. You know what I'm saying? And the last one is competition. Listen, if you're doing ministry and you're competing, ministry shouldn't be competition. Are we not on the same team? It's like we're on a basketball team and... My point guard, or my shooting guard, he makes this basket. And I'm, 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 at, I'm a little jealous. Like he made it and I didn't make it. If we're a team, one accord, one, one church, bro, we should be happy. Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he sends laborers into the harvest. What that mean? Send other people. Send other believers, spirit-filled believers, people that don't want to preach Christ in vain. People that, people that don't want to uh, preach Christ for selfish gain. Send them into the harvest. That means help. The harvest is the world. The word of God is the seed. God brings the increase. They're not denying you. You telling them about Jesus, you might think they deny you. Oh, they don't. They're not denying you. They're denying God. You just got to plant the seed. You just got you just got to do it. You just got to say something at least. You know what I'm saying? And then it's out of your hands. You share the gospel with them. You keep on praying for them. It's out of your hands. That's what sucks, though, because we don't want it to be out of our hands. Excuse me. But only only God. Being a born again, being born again, it's only something God can do. You not you would never be able to do it. I would never be able to do it. I can only tell you what the word of God says to do to become born again. It's God that brings the increase. You know what I'm saying? Just tell them it's out of your hands. You just have to tell them. You just have to tell them the word. You just have to tell them. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You can say more than that, but John 3.16. Say the rest of it. They only say that they only say that half. Hold on. Listen. Why do they only say that half? You know, I like the other half. You could turn with me to John 3.16 if you want to. Check me out. John three sixteen, they never say that's they, they never say, they never say seventeen. But look, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but the but that the world may be saved through Him. He that believes on Him is not condemned, but he that believes not. Is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that does truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be man made manifest. That they are wrought in God. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world might be saved through him. He that believes on the son. He that believes on the son is not condemned. But he that believes it not is condemned already. If you believe on the son called Christ. If you believe in the one that came and died for you on that cross. And rose again on the third day. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you're not condemned. Mm -hmm. But if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you're condemned already. Because you have not believed. He's the only sacrifice for sins. He's the only resurrection and the life. He's the only way. He's the only way. He's the only truth. He's the only way. No other God, no other religion did that, does that. Every religion, they put you at the center. They say you. They say you need to work your way. To heaven. They say your good deeds can work out. Your good deeds work out your bad deeds. 
You can't work your good. You can't work your way to heaven, bro. And we ain't sipping on nothing. We got some sober minds. Your good deeds are dirty in the eyes of the throne. So, you not, you cannot work your way to heaven. You gonna you gonna look at God. You gonna say, God, I made I made I made uh, I made YouTube videos for you. I made podcast videos for you. I made a I made a whole clothing brand for you. I made a TikTok videos for you. Come on, I did all this stuff for you, God. Can I get into heaven? Like, what, what what's going on? Like, I fed the homeless, God. I did this and that, bro. <laughs> it's not that's not, that doesn't get you into heaven, man. Listen, if you believe in Christ, you have been born again, and you have the Holy Spirit for real, you're already in heaven. You are in heaven right now, and you're just recruiting for heaven. You're just working. You're just working for heaven right now. You're already in heaven. That's what people don't understand. Through grace, grace by faith, not of works that any man should boast. Because it would be really, it would be really, it would be worse out here. Imagine everybody boasting. Yo, I did this much for Jesus. That's why I'm going into heaven. You ain't even do nothing for Jesus. It would be way crazier out here. And religion and all these things if it was like that. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you're born again. You put your full trust in him. That's what gets you to heaven. God's going to look at you and he's going to see his son. God's going to look at you and he's going to see the cross. It says, he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we may be the righteousness of God. <laughs> My right, I'm not, I'm not, all of this is not me, it's just Jesus. My righteousness is only him. My righteousness is only on him. My righteousness is Christ. I'm not, it's not my righteousness, it's not my holiness. I'm just the vessel now. You know what I'm saying? I'm, having, I'm letting the spirit have his way. His way. In Jesus' name. Go to Galatians 5.26. You don't know. There's a difference from being humble and sort of shy. Galatians 5.26. Yo, these these pages be mad. <laughs> but these pages be mad. Um, it's close together, though. You know what I'm saying? All right, we out here. Galatians. Galatians 5.26. This, this is about comfort, competition. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one of the, another, envying one another. So this same thing is about is we could go we could say this with the um yeah competition and and that competition if you're in ministry and you 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 having competition with other believers you're like oh they did this or you feel that in your heart you're never going to say it out loud but you shouldn't feel that you're human, so you're gonna feel that. But then that's what I'm saying. You crucify your flesh. You deny yourself. You tell yourself, "Nah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let it. I'm not gonna let it be this way. I'm not gonna let that happen." And then you crucify your flesh. You say, "Jesus, I don't want to envy this believer. I don't want to envy this person. Help me not to envy. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Desiring. That's what that means. Desirous. Desiring of vain glory. Vain glory." First, it's because the glory is not ours. You're doing this for Jesus. The glory is not ours. You can't control everybody. If they give you the glory, you, all you can say is, don't give me the glory. Give it to my Father, which is in heaven. I'm just a servant. Why do you act like it's by my own holiness that I'm doing this? Don't, don't, don't desire people to glorify you. Vain glory. Provoking one another and envying one another. Listen, Apostle Paul said, I am the least of the saints. That's what I'm, I'm going to be saying, too. That's what time and I'm on. I'm least of the saints. Humble yourselves, man. It, doesn't, it feels good when you don't really, you don't take none of the glory. You give it to the Father. You just, you're just his, you're just his, you're just his, um, his mouthpiece. You're just his speaker. It's amazing when you don't take none of the glory. Envying one another. And that's really it for the kingdom business, y'all. Listen, 2022, we finna be going hard. The Father keeps putting these things. 
in my head. These videos, and I'm gonna I'm keep pushing them off. I'm gonna keep pushing them out. Vra, vra, vra. My foot is on the gas pedal, bro. I just walk in it. In the verse, it says he made these beforehand that we should walk in them. So walk in them. I pray this video bless y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna see y'all in the next video. Um, I think the next video I'm gonna do is about um, your your Christian walk will flourish or fail based on three things. That's the next video. Um, that should be that should be going out in Jesus' name. But let's close close out in the word of prayer, though. <sighs> Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the people that's watching, Lord. I pray that they they get edified, they get some wisdom from this, Lord. I pray for all their minds to be renewed, and I pray for fresh fire upon them, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that you just fill them up, that angels go minister to everyone watching this video, Lord. More grace, more grace to all of them, Lord. More grace, mercy, and peace, Lord. I thank you for all that you do, and I pray that you continue to use me, that the all glory goes to you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, y'all. It's been real. Vroom!